Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. And you are watching the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. I'm going to do a quick update video here. I'm on a road trip right now. I'm actually headed towards Arizona going out to Shockwave in the Desert, which is this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and um, I'm going to do it, I'm going to be out there on Saturday, and then after that, I'm going to head to Las Vegas for the SEMA show, which starts November 1st, so, and then after about a week of the SEMA show, I'm actually heading out, um, coming back this way to Arizona, because Henry Rifle is having their thousand man shoot. Basically, it's a uh, cooperative that they're doing with the NRA. They're going to have a thousand people shooting at the same time, and it's going to be in the Guinness Book of World Records. And they invited me to participate in that. So, you know, I'm going to be on the road for quite some time. I figured I'd hit you guys up with an update while I'm, you know, doing these uh, couple thousand miles on the road. All right, so let me see, where should I start? We, uh, we recently released a video that was an interview with our friend Robert Rose, who is an American that uh, voluntarily goes to Syria to help fight ISIS. We met him in Connecticut. We were hanging out with the standard manufacturing guys. They actually asked us to, to show up for this MTV show that Robert Rose was a part of. So you guys should check that out. It's on MTV right now. You could probably um, view that on their website or if you've got MTV. Funny thing about this whole thing, I don't even, I, I don't really believe in cable, so I don't have it. You know, I do have television. I have a, a old school antenna on the roof of my house so I can get whatever local news, but I'm not really interested in cable television. So I haven't seen it myself. I have seen some screen captures. It looks like, uh, you know, I show up there for a couple of seconds and then they've got my name, Hank, and under that they put weapons expert, <laughs> which is funny. I mean, I mean, I asked them to put either Lord of Thunder or man who owns the biggest sausage. I asked, but they didn't put that. So they put weapons expert, you know. So I hope all my friends out there who are actually weapons experts are not offended by that, but hey, you know. What can I say? I can't control the MTV people. So you guys need to check that out. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about, yeah, obviously when we put up videos, we put them on full 30 first, so it's on full 30. And it's also on YouTube. We put things on YouTube a few days later. One of the things, YouTube is refusing to allow us to monetize that video because we are discussing war. And that is apparently against their, uh, their new rules that they've put out. You cannot discuss war. They don't care if you don't show war, if you don't show anyone actually getting hurt. If you discuss war in a YouTube video, you're in violation. So really crazy. I mean, this is just part of YouTube's continued, what I call, racism against gun guys. Yep, I said it. I think YouTube is racist against the gun people out there. You know it's true. If you think about this, guns are legal in America, right? Constitution, Second Amendment, we can have guns. Gun guys like myself, we follow the laws. We go through our background checks. We follow all the rules. We do what we're supposed to do. What we're doing is 100% legal, yet we are discriminated against. Why? Because corporation uh, corporations decide that, you know, they don't like what we stand for. I don't know what we stand for. Why is it so bad? We're just standing up for our right to defend ourselves, to own guns for whatever reason we want to. It doesn't really matter, in my opinion why you want to own guns. Defending yourself, hunting, you know, sport, whatever. It's a right that we have. And uh, YouTube, as well as some other corporations out there, some other social media outlets, practice discrimination against us when we're doing something that's 100% legal, regulated, enforced. We're investigated. 
prodded and probed. But they still do, you know, for example, they don't accept advertising from the firearms industry. And that's why we put stuff on 430. That's why we put things on 430 at least 48 hours before they go on YouTube. So they don't accept uh, uh, advertising. 430 does accept advertising from the firearms industry. YouTube also doesn't allow me to, I, they won't take my money if I want to pay them to advertise my YouTube channel because of what I do. So, you know, um, in these upcoming elections, which I hope everyone out there is voting, I've already voted. I'm going to be out of town when voting is going on, obviously. So I early voted, which is actually pretty cool. You know, you, you get a ballot, you get to sit there and investigate these dudes before you vote for their asses. You know, you can look them up and see how long have they been in office, who appointed them, what are their affiliations, etc., and then get to make your own decision. So I early voted already before I came out on this trip. And, you know, as I was saying, I think after these elections, especially if we get, dare I even say the name of she who should not be mentioned, you know, if, if we get, if we get what the polls are predicting, which I don't really believe the polls, you know, not 100%, you guys could just go reference uh, Brexit and see what's going on there. Um, you know, if we get who, if we get who I hope we don't get, I think you'll see a lot of these corporations getting a lot more draconian in their hate against freedom and gun folks like myself. So just prepare yourself for that. I know I definitely am not a liberal and I am not voting for anyone that's going to take away my gun rights. Gun rights and the, the ability to own and um, and practice this level of freedom is incredibly important to us. For us to be free in any other things, we have to be able to defend that, right? So think about it. So anyway, I don't want to get into that whole lecture, but I just wanted to let you guys know that because of what YouTube is doing by refusing to monetize that video, it's on YouTube and you can watch it. If you want to support us, go to Full 30 and watch all our stuff because that is more of a support. There's lots of things you can do to support us. You could, if you're watching this on YouTube, you know, you could donate to our channel. Um, you know, we also have a Patreon. Lola uh, is selling things like patches and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, if you're low on funds, which I understand, not everyone out there has got money to burn. I get it. And you want to do something to support us, check out Full 30. You know, when you look at stuff on Full 30 and you see advertising and all that, that is, uh, that helps us. You know, also you can patronize the folks who sponsor the channel. That, uh, that keeps us going as well. So that would be, I'm always talking to people about it, but that would be Andrew's Custom Leather, PTP Tactical, and my friends at Safety Harbor Firearms, they actually sponsor the channel, which allows me to do all this crazy stuff that I'm out here doing, right? It allows me to, to travel, go to all these shows that I go to. It helps us buy equipment, uh, the stuff that you're seeing me on right now. Helps us pay for guns, pay for ammo, all that good stuff. So support those guys. They're also good guys. I don't uh, go willy-nilly into these sponsorship things. You know, I make sure that they're things that I believe in, people that I like, and uh, people who will take care of you guys. So, you know, it's a process that I go through. So, you know, you can, you can take that to heart, and if you want to help us out, we really appreciate it. So now, like I said, I'm going to Shockwave. There's gonna be uh, a few companies out there that I know. Um, Ken from K&M Arms that just released their 308 Bullpup. That's basically a improved version of the Bushmaster M17S. They've just uh, released a 308 version, so we've got videos up on that. You guys should check it out. K&M uh, Arms is gonna be there, so I'm gonna go hang out with them a little bit. Also, Kaiser US is gonna be there. Those are the guys that make the polymer upper and lower 
that you guys saw Lola built up her rifle. So Kaiser US is going to be there. I need to build my own Kaiser US rifle because, you know, she's getting kind of snooty that she built this lightweight rifle and all that kind of stuff. And everybody loves Lola. She's so awesome. I love her too. What can I do? She's not here with me on this trip. I'm, I'm road tripping it on my own. You know. Um, some of my friends are going to be in Vegas for the SEMA show, hanging out with me. I'm going to uh, be meeting up with Reed Henricks of uh, Valor Ridge. So you guys should know him. That's a, a training school up there in Tennessee. And he's my buddy. He's going to be there. He's doing an AK class with Jim Fuller. So I guess there's guys in this class that are going to be building an AK. And then they're going to go out there and shoot the AK get training both in building and using it practically that's pretty cool I'm not gonna be in the class but I am gonna be dropping in because I'm, obviously I'm doing SEMA and SEMA is this is gonna be my first time going to SEMA if you guys have been watching the channel of course I'm into cars right now I'm in my 2015 Dodge Challenger scat pack doing the road trip I'm into cars I know I'm supposed to do a review of this car. I got to do that sometime soon. <laughs> but, um, you know, and, and you should have been watching our RV videos that we've been doing. We're calling it our off-road champion. We have a 1980 champion RV, and we are converting it to be diesel and also to be a 4x4. So that in the future, when I'm doing these long trips, I won't have to stop in hotels like I've been doing. You know, I could drive for about 12 hours, and then I stop in a hotel get a good night's sleep, check my email, stuff like that, and then get back on the road. Um, hopefully in the future we'll be doing that with the Off-Road Champion Project. If you haven't heard about that, go check it out. Very cool. And SEMA is my way of getting a little bit more into cars, and it's also a way of diversifying the YouTube channel, the YouTube side of it a little bit more. You guys know I just don't do gun stuff on YouTube, right? You know, I, I, I'm into electronics. That's how we do this. So sometimes I'm sharing my opinion of some of the electronics that we're using or tips that I've developed. You know, I'm not an electronics expert either. Just, you know, FYI. <laughs> I'm not an expert at anything. So, you know, sometimes I share that and I want to share car stuff with you guys. It is a little bit of a diversification of the channel, I have to admit that. And I think it's prudent. You know, at this juncture, very prudent at this juncture to do, not knowing what's coming in the future. But, you know, don't worry. This Hank Strange situation is making plans for all kinds of stuff. For example, you might not be aware of this, Lola and I are now FFLs. And on top of that, we also have our SOT. So we, uh, we can sell guns, and we are doing that on Gun Broker. I believe it's called Strange Firearms on Gunbroker. If you want to look it up, we've got things up there, uh, things that we featured on the channel, things that I think are cool, I'm selling to people, or things I could get for a good price and pass that on to folks. I'm selling it on Gunbroker as an FFL. And then I'm in Florida, so I can sell things to people outside of Florida, but within Florida, um, you know, we have to do all that on the Hacienda or a gun show. So if you want to buy stuff from me, you can do that. If you're in my hood, you can buy guns, you can get um, suppressors, SBRs, etc. You know, we're a dealer for, right now we're a dealer for PTP Tactical, which I said before sponsors the channel. They sell suppressors. We're also a dealer for a couple of other suppressor companies. I think we've, we've signed up with Gemtech and Liberty Suppressors, etc. So, you know, and if, if we're not signed up for someone that you're interested in and you want to buy something from us, you can actually, you know, call us up and, and we'll go get signed up. And then while you're waiting for your suppressor or your SBR or whatever it is to for the paperwork to go through, you can come shoot it on the Hacienda and hang out with me. I won't mind since you're helping us out, you know. It's a fair trade, I think. One hand washing the other, as some people will put it. So that's just a little bit of what we're up to. But that's uh, that's also our way to prepare for the things that are coming. So if you want to know if I think that, you know, if some dreaded people get into the White House, 
that that will be the end of guns. I don't think it's going to be the immediate end of guns. Um, folks have been out there trying to end guns for a long time, so it's a long process, and it would take a long time for them to do, do that to us. I think it will be maybe the beginning of the end, you know. Remember that the next president is going to get to pick quite a few people that are going into to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court's going to have some influence over these things going forward, especially for the people who are trying to make America like Australia, right? That's the big thing, you know, there's some, some actors and stuff like that out there who think they know better than us, you know, guys who are supposed to be anti-gun, yet they make movies with guns, and they make a lot of money out of those movies with guns where they um, inflict a lot of pretend gun violence on people and make a lot of money out of it, yet they're anti-gun, and they're calling for us to go the route of Australia. So, Supreme Court can have some um, influence on that, as well as executive orders, like what Obama's been doing for the last eight years, you know, that has some influence on it. So I think it, that's why I think it's so important for us to get out there and vote, right? Make sure you rock the vote. They want to uh, make the gun guys out there apathetic. And I've, and I've actually seen a lot of gun guys, guys who I've known for some time, telling me that they're not going to vote. And that's just crazy. You have to get out there and vote. I get it. You know, it's like you're, you're voting for the lesser of two evils and we're in a two-party system, really, because I'm not voting for... I, I'm, I'm a libertarian, but I'm not voting for the libertarians. You know, I think uh, Gary Johnson just knows about drugs. I do believe that, you know, a lot of these drugs should be legal in the U.S. I believe that. But that's all That's all he wants. I don't really buy that he's pro-gun. So, um, I'm not voting for those guys, you know. I think we could figure all that out without getting a stoner in there. Even though I believe drugs should be legal, I don't take drugs, I don't use drugs, except for the ones that are prescribed to me. You know, I feel like that's like a Marilyn Manson song. I don't love the drugs, the drugs love me. But the only kind of drugs I take are the ones that are prescribed. <laughs> and I don't even, I don't even love those. So, I'm not voting for Gary Johnson at all. As a matter of fact, I already voted, so I didn't vote for Gary Johnson. If you want to know who I voted for, I voted for Trump. So there you go. I know it's tough because you feel like the lesser of two evils. Okay, so what do I personally think about that whole lesser of two evils thing? Here's what I think. I think that politics is so toxic that in the end, anyone who goes into politics is seeking power. That's just the way that it is. So whether you're uh, a libertarian, a liberal, a conservative, a Republican, a Democrat, whatever it is you believe, those people out there seeking political office, there's power involved, right? And power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So I'm not going to argue with you about this whole thing of choosing between two evils. Most of the people, not all, but most of the people who want to be politicians we shouldn't trust their asses. I don't, I don't trust Trump either. You know, I, I think I've, I've looked at the Trump. I know Trump is saying that he's not going to take away guns from us when Hillary's saying she is going to take away guns from us. I think uh, Trump is a gun owner. And more than that, his children are gun guys. I'm, I'm, I'm very confident that his family are gun guys. And I think it's going to be hard for him to go back on his word when his children, although yes, they're wealthy, so when these things come, they're they're not going to be immediately taken care, taken away from them. I think I've seen enough evidence that the family is into guns and they don't want to go that route, and that's why I'm voting for them. But does that make me? Th does do I believe in my mind that he's somehow innocent and perfect, and and you know we could trust him 100%? No, politicians. You know, I call this time politics time, you know. It's from a Buju Benton song, if you're into reggae. I'm into reggae because I'm from the Caribbean, obviously. And Buju Benton has a song saying, it's politics time again. And, you know, politicians, you know, they're tricksters. So I don't believe them 100%. Um, but I want the politicians that we've got leverage over and, and 
I'm not going to support the ones who are outright telling me that they're going to take things away from me. So that's how I look at it. Yes, you know, they're politicians, so there's something terrible about them. And it makes you feel like you're voting for the lesser of two evils. So what? Get over it. Get out there and vote. You know, at the, at the, at the least, what you're going to do is help put people in power in, your lo in local offices, things that directly affect you. And, and I've said this before in my voting video. You know, when, you're, when it comes to your hometown mayor, your sheriff, uh, your, your local, your congressman and your senators and all that kind of stuff, you could put these people in office and or take them out of office. So you have to get out there and vote. And, and while you're out there, yeah, vote for president. But ask yourself what's important to you. There is no politician that we are going to 100% be able to trust. And if you believe that there is, then you're just being naive. I don't believe that. I, you know, I think we know who the Clintons are. We know what Obama's done for eight years. We all know that, um, in my opinion, Trump, yeah, he's not perfect. I don't think he ever pretended to be perfect. He is your prototypical New Yorker like myself. So he's a bit, you know, braggadocious and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't really faze me. I don't believe when people say that he's racist and all that. I've, I've dealt with Trump before in, in my past life growing up in New York and his family. And I don't put them in the category of being racist. I mean, come on. Even if you look at uh, his, his TV show, I'm pretty sure you've had... The, uh, people of color win that TV show so I'm not into reality shows but I, I watch I read the news and all that kind of stuff so you know I I'm, I'm just I just don't have any evidence of that you know of course people are saying because you want to you know because Trump wants to close the borders and all that kind of stuff he's being racist well take it from me I'm an immigrant you know I came up I came across the borders and um, I understand what he's saying, you know, we have to control our borders. That's just the way that it is. I think that immigrants built America and will continue to build America and are the lifeblood of America, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't uh, vet people who are coming into America. So when, when my family um, came here to America and we got our green cards and then became citizens and all that, we had to be vetted, right? So background checks, FBI, fingerprints, and all that other kind of uh, data that exists. You know, I've got eye scans and all that kind of stuff out there. My, my friends, when, whenever I do a background check to buy a firearm, my stuff goes through faster than my friends. And they're always like, what, what's up with that? You know, that's because I've been, you know, thoroughly checked out by the government. <laughs> so it's not a bad thing in my personal opinion. All right, I don't know how long this is running. I don't want to make it too long. I figured I'm on the road, driving around. I think right now I am somewhere in Texas. Don't ask me exactly where. I'm on I-10, driving through Texas, headed towards uh, New Mexico, I believe, and then Arizona, doing my thing. I'm gonna get back to listening to my audiobooks because that's what I do when I'm on the road. I listen to audiobooks and hip hop music. That's right, I listen to the hippity hop. <laughs> listen, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about us. You know, keep supporting the Hank Strain situation out there. We really appreciate it. We just crossed over 44,000 subscribers on YouTube and we're headed towards uh, 50. 50,000 subscribers one of these days. We're also on full 30. The best place for the dyed in the wool gun guys. I'm Hank Strange.